Why did I become a fiber artist? Because I had uh, been a successful painter for many, many years. All of a sudden, I felt I wanted something tactile. I wanted to feel my work. I wanted other people, even blind people, to be able to feel my work and determine what it is, either for themselves or do something so obvious that they would know it's a tree or an animal. And uh, I came about doing it uh, by trying to uh, uh, get involved in other tactile things like pottery and uh, the myth of pottery and the beauty of it, it, it just, I found out I couldn't throw it and get, the, and get the bubbles out of the clay. So that was the end of my experience with pottery. Then I took a class in uh, sculpture and I worked large. And uh, I got a very bright girl I am. I tried to move that heavy, heavy piece over to a water source. And we were working, <laughs> we were working in uh, cement and it needed to be kept watered every night. I put it, dragged it closer to the water source and I never wasn't able to stand up straight for the next six weeks. Well, laying in bed, I had to have something to do with my hands. And I had already thought a little bit about what am I going to do? Then it struck me uh, that I had something in the front closet, a, uh, uh, a pre-embroidered uh, flower on a background that was uh, needed to be filled, the background of which needed to be filled in. That was petty point. I was to do needlepoint. I said to my husband, get that out of the, out of the closet for me. It had the needles, it had the thread, it had the scissors. I went to town on it. I had to undo a lot of it to teach myself needlepoint while looking at the ceiling with special glasses that allowed me to see forward. Then I thought to myself after completing it that there's got to be something more exciting than this. I would want it to stand away from the background. So I started playing around and I thought I had invented something. Well, I found out, it being the mid-70s, that there was a whole movement of return to fiber. I wanted to be sure that what I made was going to last, so I did a lot of uh, uh, looking in books, reading, seeing the early dates of some fiber that has lasted to this day. And uh, I went from there. At first, I was turned down by galleries and so forth because it wasn't Weaving. Weaving is what was wanted. And uh, they didn't care for my work, which was really all over the place. As a matter of fact, uh, one of the pieces that I had done was uh, accepted by uh, the head of the Department of, uh, of uh, Art for the, sh for the Art Institute. And uh, unfortunately, the man wanted to call it the hook book. And in those days, in those days, it wasn't going to work. Yes, I tried hooking on the canvas. And he said, you know, if you were my student, I'd flunk you because you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> it's supposed to look as good on the back as it does on the front. So with a few words, he, he straightened me out and I, I learned how to work just from that. And then eventually I took a course and I had a very important question to ask my teacher, Park Chambers. I said, the first thing I want to know is how this, the work that I am doing can be done easy. I want to know the shortcuts so that I can produce more work. His answer was, and it was to the entire class, there are no shortcuts. And I thought, oh, oh, there it goes. Well, anyway, later on, I began to fool around with other things, with metal, which I added to my work and with plastic in various forms, which I added to my work. And soon I began to work with O-rings, Buna O-rings, and I began to finger weave. Then I became accepted. As a matter of fact, I was accepted in an international contest, and my work was shown in France, Beauvais, France. And, um, I've been at it since, haven't taken up the paintbrush, but 
Uh, having arthritis, it would be hard for me to hold a paintbrush long enough to complete anything. And as far as the techniques that I use on my work, I have to make them up as I go along. And I have to tell you that I think that's what all fiber artists do, so that there are no uh, repetitions. Uh, each piece of fiber art that you see is usually original. You can't exactly copy anything you've done before. And that's part of the magic of this wonderful art that has no limits. You can do anything with it. I think all children should be taught fiber art in a way because fiber art teaches you to pick up something like an ordinary uh, spacer and see the possibilities of using that with other things. So I believe if you, if you learn to look at things all around, that maybe it'll teach you that with people to look at the more than what you see at first sight. I think it would be a marvelous thing and I hope that it becomes something in school. And of course, some of these kids will develop into sculptures and wonderful fiber artists, and we foster that. Right. As for realistic, I, I much prefer that you read your own stories, but each piece I do does have a story. I might want to be working more on sculptural uh, fiber art, fiber art as sculpture. Uh, some of it uh, uh, I'm doing now, it'll be a series of a hundred, please Lord let me live that long, uh, of a hundred totem poles. Uh, some of which I will hang on a wall because I realize that there won't be too many places that can accommodate that. And uh, some of these pieces are in this show elsewhere in the, uh, on the premises. And I think that I would like to do that. And I'd also like to train myself to work smaller so that less time goes in, less money goes in, and more people can afford to have them have the work in their homes. But in any case, fiber art is definitely the thing of this century, and it's highly collectible.